ever since I found out what six figure was and it was real popular and everybody was just shouting, I want to make six figures, blah, blah, blah. Like you hear about 70,000 a year, 80,000 a year, 90,000. You're like, that's cool. I want to be one of those folks who can say that I make six figures and have a good job, make a good living and can provide not only myself, but my family, my future family, the lifestyle that they deserve. So, so I'm taking this video into a slightly different direction than most of my videos. And I'm just gonna talk to you straight up about the habits that I've developed over the years that have led to me earning six figures. And you don't need to worry, this isn't about me telling you how I manifested it or how I thought my way into six figures. I'm gonna give you guys actionable tips and habits that I've developed myself over the years that have gotten me there by the age of 25. I'm 27 now, so it's been a couple of years, so I can speak with confidence when I say that these things have 100% led me to six figures. So we're gonna jump straight into this video right now. If you're new here, I'm Reggie Bryant. This channel is about personal finance and personal growth, and I am the author of The Wealth Journey. I'm here to help you increase your income, manage your money better, and live your best life. So we're gonna jump right into this. So the first habit is communication. And I'm talking about not just talking, but also listening. So I'm gonna break it down for you real quick. You'll actually be surprised at how big of a skill communication is. And when you can articulate yourself, how you're thinking, how you're feeling, what your perspective and perception is of the world to other people, that makes you a very dangerous person. Not too many people can do that without getting emotional. Not too many people can do that without harming relationships or being overly opinionated and then destroying what they're already starting to build. But I would say the bigger piece of communication that I would say that I've fully mastered is just sitting down, taking a second to listen to the other person. Cause we tend to think that things are all about us. And it's easy to kind of get to this tunnel vision of your mission and your direction and your reasoning and your feelings that we forget about the other person. So the reason that the skill is so extremely important is because you can't build relationships if you can't have effective and good communication. This will allow you to build a six figure income because now you're more likable, you're more personable. People actually want to talk to you and be around you and socialize with you, but they also want to help you as well when you're in need because you've helped them, you've become a more valuable person to them and you offer this warmth about yourself that just most people don't have because you're able to communicate, you're able to not only listen, but you're able to articulate your thoughts, your opinions, and your way of seeing things. And it just makes you much more of a likable person. So that's what I've done in my life and it's helped me out a lot. And I just remember when I had my first job, even though it was chaotic, even though I hated it, I always articulated myself very well and I always sat down and listened because I had a bunch of people working under me. So I had to listen to a lot of people. I had to listen to a lot of different people in other departments. I had to listen to people above me and I had to understand where they were coming from so I could fully grasp the situation that I was dealing with. And I just never forget, people always told me, you know, the way you carry yourself, the way you communicate and articulate yourself, that's gonna take you very, very far. So that is like a precursor to earning six figures. If you're not able to communicate, it's gonna be very hard for you to get there. And I had to learn that quick and I had to figure out how am I going to communicate with other people? Because that's just a big part of adulting and that's a big part of not only jobs and you know the workforce, but it's also a part of entrepreneurship and just growing those relationships with other people. Because make no mistake, you need people to make money. So another habit that I developed over the years to earn six figures a year is to always have a growth type of mindset. No matter how bad things got for me or seemed to get, like I've never developed a victim's mentality. Like sure, I might've beaten myself up sometimes. Sure, I might've like been like, man, this is tough. Why is this happening to me? But I always, always snap myself out of it. I always told myself that there's a better way and I've always picked myself up and I'm always like, well, you know what? This happened today, but it's my fault. I had a bad day at work. I got mistreated at work. I worked way too many hours this week, right? I've been mistreated in my relationship or X, Y, Z, right? Whatever your hardship is and what that looks like for you, I always find a way to be like, well, you know what? That's my fault for tolerating this mess. That's my fault for choosing to work here. So what are we gonna do about it? How are we gonna get better from here? How are we gonna grow from here? Because in life, 
as an adult, it's all on you to grow and change yourself. No one's going to do it for you. No one's going to go to work for you. No one's going to read books for you. No one is going to level you up. For you sure there might be some people that can come into your life that can push you to the right direction but you can't expect or anticipate that to happen nobody is coming to save you so i just really had to adapt that mindset and i really had to think every single day how can i get better how can i improve my life what things do i need to change about my life right now what are the giants and obstacles in my life and how am i going to jump those hurdles it wasn't no well i can't do this it wasn't Man, I don't make enough money. It wasn't none of that. It was, I want to make six figures. How am I going to do it? It was, I want to get a different, better job. How am I going to do it? I want to work as few hours as possible and make as much money as possible. How am I going to do it? There's no room for lollygagging. There's no room for sitting around being like, well, this is just me. I'm fixed in this box, in this bubble that everybody puts me in. No, you can try to put me in a box. It ain't going to last too long. So I developed that mentality like I'm going to get over whatever happens in life. I'm going to jump over every single hurdle. I am just like, in my mind, I am unstoppable. Some things might not go according to plan. So what? I am going to 100% destroy and accomplish every single one of my goals. There's nobody who can put me at a fixed rate for like salary, for example, because if I'm not happy with my salary, I'll either get a higher paying job or I'll make more money for myself on the side. There, there is no stopping my ambition. Just bit my tongue. Anyway, there's no stopping it. So I recommend anybody in life to early on develop a growth mindset instead of a fixed mindset. The next habit is helping as many people as possible. There's something to be said about how many people you're able to help, whether it's in a working environment, whether it's outside of work, whether you're just like at Target or something and you're helping someone push a cart. Like it could be a lot of different things that are just helpful. Like you see someone that's far away from where the carts are and you're close, you hey, I'll take that, take the cart. I, I do it all the time. That's a helpful gesture. And when you get into the habit of helping people, it kind of goes back to what I said in the first habit, you become more valuable to people and you find more ways to help people and just like those simple ways. Like for example, this YouTube channel helps a multitude of people with finances. Even if they just watch one video, they just need one thing, one tip that's going to help them out. I'm all for it. It's going to help them with their finances. If you see that somebody's struggling at work, don't do like they used to do me. Now in my first job, I was lost. Everybody was just kind of laughing at me and just didn't want to extend the helping hand until of course, like the boss told them to, you know what I mean? But if you see somebody struggling at work, Hey, let me, let me help you with this. Maybe try it this way. This is what's worked for me. I see that, you know, you're new here and you're still learning. I want to make it as easy for you as possible. Stuff like that, being valuable. People are gonna love you and respect you for that type of thing. You're gonna become so much more useful. People are gonna feel like they can come to you, like you're valuable, like they need you. And it's just the right thing to do. And people are gonna notice that. And it is gonna take you super, super far. As you can tell, the things I'm talking about aren't like financial in nature, but it's gonna lead to you growing as a person and becoming someone who can demand that type of pay. You will become like a magnet for more pay. With that said, you know, don't allow people to take your kindness for weakness if you are extending a helping hand and you want to help as many people as possible. So you also have to have a, an aspect of street smarts and knowing kind of when people are taking advantage of you or they're just trying to get the most out of you. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm just saying as much as possible, help people. Be nice, be kind to people because there's no reason not to. You don't know what anybody else is going through in life. And you know, what goes around in life comes around. Speaking of helping people, this is a financial channel first and foremost, and I just want to extend this offer. So I have something free for you right in the description and in the comment section. If you want to, I will give you free weekly finance tips and advice straight to your email inbox. Just click the link below. It's going to help you out. And it's helped quite a bit of people out and I just have nothing but free value to offer for you. So check it out if you want to. I also provide coaching services all down in the description. So another thing I do, I have a constant bias for action. And you know, the, the best way I want to frame this is to say that I just have an insane 
amount of drive. Like I used to be the biggest procrastinator ever. I used to overthink everything and be like, well, what if this happens? I used to think, oh, I'm just so smart. I'm just going to anticipate every little thing that could possibly go wrong in me pursuing this. It could be the simplest thing. It could be something as simple as asking a girl out. It could be something as simple as studying for a test or doing a project, something like that, right? And I used to just overcomplicate everything instead of just doing it. And so as an adult, I just got into that habit of just putting in the work and just doing it. I didn't know what the heck I was doing when I started this YouTube channel. I just started posting videos. I just started trying stuff. When I made my website that goes with this channel, I, I didn't know what the heck I was doing. I just went for it. I just started learning little by little, watching YouTube videos month by month. I just started incrementally adding on to my website. It took forever, but I'm further along than I would have been if I would have just been like, well, let me plan out every little aspect of this website and I'm not gonna start until this plan is perfect. Cause you know, everything always just goes to plan. Always, right? So I, I didn't put myself in that position. I used to do that all the time, especially in like high school and even in my early stages of college. But I found that that just wasn't valuable. You just have to start acting. If an emergency happens, you can't sit around planning how you're going to get around. Like, no, get out there. Like your house is on fire. What the heck are you doing? You got to, you got to move. Your body has to start moving. You have to start getting that muscle memory out there. If you have ambitions and things that you want to do in your life, cool. Just start trying stuff. You could either, if you want to play basketball, if you want to start getting into martial arts, cool. Start doing it. Start getting into classes. Just start trying. You're going to have somebody that's there that's going to coach and mentor you through it. But if you sit around trying to read books the whole time and strategize the whole time about what your strategy is going to be going into it, it's not going to be as effective as actually getting out there and hitting the punching bag and sparring with somebody or shooting a basketball. Moving on. Another habit. I'm extremely inquisitive. I ask a lot of questions, but specifically I ask the right questions to the right people. If I want to, let's say, move up at work, I'm going to find someone who's in the role that I want to be in, that I look up to, that I would trust receiving advice from, not just any old body who I feel like is just kind of crooked in their ways. I'm like, no, I'm going to go to somebody that I feel like is well-respected, well-trusted, and they do a good job at what they do, I'm going to pick their brain. Well, you know, how does your mindset differ than it used to before you moved up, right? What can I expect if I were to take on your role? What type of interviewing questions and what kind of mindset do I need to go into when I'm going into this role? Because I really want to move up, you know, stuff like that. And it's not kissing butt. It's none of that. Like you're literally sitting down with somebody who is where you want to be and you're picking their brain. And you should be a sponge and soak up any information they have to offer, which is why communication is key, listening. Because you may feel like you have a lot of answers, but there's a reason that they're in that position and you're not. Whether that's time, whether that's seniority, or whether that's experience is besides the point. They can offer a perspective that you do not have because they're in a position that you're not in. If you want to earn six figures, or if you want to become like an entrepreneur, let's say, you want to pick the brain of someone who's gotten there. I've been doing this for years since I was 21. I've been sitting down with people who are, who are millionaires and have ran their own businesses successfully, who have written books, who have created courses, who have built their own networks. And I'm like, well, you know, how'd you do this? What was your biggest struggle? Like you just get to understand different perspectives. That's not necessarily going to put you in their position, but it's going to help you understand better what you could be looking forward to going through. And you can learn from some of their mistakes early on. So you don't make those mistakes. You could just say something as simple as what advice do you offer someone like me? Who's trying to get to where you're at? That's a really good question. Cause they're really going to think about it. Or you could phrase it. What do you wish you knew when you first got started? that would take you so much further along than you already are. That right there, they love that question. So you have to ask the right people the right questions. Think about where you wanna be in life and then see if you can find somebody who's there. It could even be something as simple as the gym, right? People come up to me all the time, hey, what's your workout regimen? Because they want to be able to achieve a physique that is lean and muscular. And they feel like if they go to somebody who has that physique, they can learn quite a bit. And nine times out of 10, they are correct. They can learn from somebody who's achieved that physique. It's not all genetics. Sometimes you got to just put the work in. All right.
we're getting into the meat and potatoes of this video. If you've lasted this long, shout out to you. Hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. We're gonna jump straight into this. So the biggest thing that has led to me earning six figures a year is looking at my flaws over and over and over again. It was the most daunting, uncomfortable thing I've ever experienced in my life. But you know what? Now it's extremely comfortable. Now I'm like, well, I could do this better. Well, these are my exact flaws. And you know what it does? It helps you become self-aware and understand where you fall short. That makes it insanely easy in a job interview when they say, what are your strengths and weaknesses? Because you're so self-aware, you can just name them right at the drop of a hat. And then you can then say what you're doing to improve on those flaws. They like that in interviews. I'm, I'm giving y'all game here. Y'all better take notes. Y'all better listen. But um, it's uncomfortable because you have to be able to, one, take feedback, whether it's constructive, whether it has like a condescending tone. You have to be, you have to be able to think like, there's a reason they're saying this. And sometimes you are your own worst critic. That's how I am. And a lot of times I see a lot of things in myself well before anybody else will ever see them. So that's an opportunity to fix these flaws before anyone else is. Because there's an actual quote out that says something to the effect of, I cannot find it to save my life, but it says something to the effect of this. A person's success is based on how much truth they can stand to bear. How truthful are you with yourself when you look in the mirror and you look at your financial situation or your career or your relationships, your physical health, your mental health, all this stuff? How truthful are you? And I'm not saying to beat yourself up by any means. How truthful are you though? How truthful are you when you're one minute late to work every day and no one notices? How truthful are you when you're like, well, I really didn't give my 100% today in my workout. How truthful are you when you say, you know what? I did the bare minimum. I reached my saving goal this month, but I, I know I could have done more. I mean, that amount of truth is so like gut wrenching and mentally it puts you in a place where you're like, wow, I gotta, I'm messing up. I gotta do better. Like, even if you're already doing well, none of that matters. You can do better. That's the thing. How truthful are you with yourself? Because when other people give you feedback, they're either going to sugarcoat it or they're going to be just ridiculously ruthless about it. Like, well, you didn't do this and you didn't do that and you need to improve here and, and this sucked. And, you know, people are interesting. So, but you have to also understand there is validity and value that is held within words. Everybody that gives you constructive feedback ain't a hater, regardless of popular belief. Everybody wants to say, oh, they're hating. They wish they could do what I'm doing. Well, nah, I mean, a lot of times people say things because they actually seen it themselves or they feel some sort of truth in it and they think you need to hear it. So a lot of times when I get negative feedback, I'm like, okay, well, even if, even if I don't agree with it and I don't see that within myself, I'm always thinking there's a reason why somebody said this. They're not just saying it, just to say it. Some people do have ill will and they want to bring you down, but that's few and far between. You have to really be able to face the truth if you want to hit success. Because the reason I say that flaws and looking at my flaws have gotten me to earn six figures a year is simply because I'm always working on myself. I'm always fixing those flaws or improving on those flaws. And when that happens, you become better and better and better and you never stop. It's a never ending growth journey. It never stops. Just like wealth never stops, you always got to keep improving and getting better. So that was all six of the habits, but I do have a bonus habit for you. Here it goes. Consistently setting and achieving my goals. Even if they're the little mini goals, I don't care. That is a freaking win. Every week, I plan out what I'm doing every single day of the week, before work, after work, exactly what I'm going to do on my days off. I have it all planned out and every little thing I have planned out is a goal. That goal could be record a YouTube video before work like I'm literally doing right now. That goal could be something like edit two videos in one sitting. So these many goals that I'm talking about, these are the leading indicators that this video is 100% going to be produced on YouTube on a Monday or a Wednesday. 1000% is going to happen. And then the lagging indicator is the views that come about from this video. Those are results. The goal could be something like 
drive to work. The goal could be something like invest $1,000 into the stock market before the end of this month. Many goals lead to gigantic outcomes. That $1,000 a month over the course of years is going to turn into millions of dollars, 100%. And I've been doing this for a while. So it's just going to keep compounding. It's going to keep growing. And then sometimes it turns into bigger goals like get 10,000 subscribers on YouTube, earn $1,000 a month online, invest $30,000 in the stock market, have six figures in my 401k, earn six figures per year, you know, stuff like that. And once these things happen, you're only going to continue to set new goals, even if they're mini goals or big goals, you're going to keep setting new goals and you're going to keep achieving them. And the more you do it, the more you grow. So you never stop. You never stop growing your salary. You never stop improving your health. You never stop becoming the best version of yourself that is most useful, valuable, friendly, and just approachable to all of society. It makes you more valuable, not only to yourself and your family and your friends, but to everyone. And that is extremely valuable. But anyways, those are my habits. Those are my six habits plus a bonus habit of what I've developed over the years to earn six figures per year by the age of 25. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. But anyway, that is the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so we can control you, control your finances and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.